So colour palette for this, this painting is done with a lot of warm yellows and some warm reds with the lovely accents of pinks on the ears and the hair's body. So palette wise, there is a Chinese white, a permanent yellow, a yellow ochre, a burnt sienna, which is a really nice warm red colour, and then a vermilion hue. And this is a orangey, vibrant red colour. And if you don't have it in your palette, that's fine. Just use a red mix in with a bit of a lemon yellow. And then there's Rose Madder, which is a pink colour. And again, you can just mix in pink. You can mix a pink with some red and some white if you don't have it in your palette. And then a neutral tint, and this is sometimes called a Payne's Grey. This is a warm grey shade, which is perfect for watercolour painting. If you don't have it in your palette, you can just mix some ivory black, ultramarine and some yellow ochre, and that will give you a similar colour. So there's your palette. Let's begin! So, just a quick note on your colour palette. I have organised mine like this because I know I'm going to be working with the yellows a lot, so I've put them next together on the palette. And this will become clearer when you're painting, but I've also then put the oranges next to each other, and then just below is the Payne's Grey, that navy colour. So it's just about stacking and getting your palette ready and workable in order to start with. This will become clearer when we go through the video later, but don't worry too much if you've already set up. So let's start. You can see my palette there. I've got all of my paints ready. I'm also got a glass of clean water, my sketch, and then some kitchen towel. Having a kitchen towel when you're watercolour painting is really handy, so you can just dab your brush and remove excess. So that's the sort of setup you need. Your palette, your plate, your glass, some kitchen towel, your paint brushes, and then obviously what you're going to be painting. So to start with, and I'll just talk over what I'm doing and then speed up the video so you're not having to watch this <laughs> very slow process. What I'm aiming to do here is wet the entire area of the paper um, that I want to deposit some yellow tints on. And we're building up the form of the rabbit's body here. So what I'm doing is loading up my brush with some clear water. Clear water is really important. If you haven't got clean water, go and get some. So I'm loading up a thick brush with water and I'm just painting over the areas that I want the hair's body to come through in that yellow, lovely yellow tone. So I'm starting up here with the ears and then I'm dragging them up at the top of the ear point there. And I'm going to work away around this entire sketch. Um, if you're looking at your reference photo, you're aiming to put clear water wherever you see any of those yellow tones. And what we're going to do is then, once that water is absorbed into the paper, we're going to deposit the yellow colour. And I'll show you how to do that when I get around to it in the painting. But for now, I'll let you watch that. And then, once you've caught pace, you can pause and we'll start the actual colour application. So here the video is going a bit faster so you don't have to wait <laughs> forever to watch it. But what I'm doing is I'm going working down my way down the body and I'm just applying quite a, it's quite a heavy water wash. It's sort of pulled up on the paper. You can see the reflection coming through on the lens of the camera. But I'm working my way down through any parts in that reference photo that are yellow. What we're doing is, if you can see the sheen on it, it's just about picking up on the camera. When we've gone around the entire body, if we put our eye level to the paper, we'll see that the sheen of the pool of water has dropped away. That, When that's happened, that means that all those fibres have absorbed the water and it'd be much more receptive to dispersing that watercolour pigment. So, basically, work your way around and get to that point. Once that watercolour paper has been absorbed, that water, that's when we can start painting on it. So I'll leave you to it and you can just pause away when you're done. So guys, here I've got my palette. You can see my colours and where they're positioned. I tend to put colours that I'm going to use a lot, um, that I know that are going to sit together on the actual painting together on the palette. So here you've got my yellow ochre and my yellow sat next to each other. And then on the opposite side I've got that Payne's grey and then the reds just to the bottom of the plate there. So here are our colours that we're going to use. That's then, So in the first wash we're going to deposit this yellow ochre and warm... Uh, yellow colour. So what I'm doing is I'm pulling out that warm yellow first and then next to it I'm pulling down that yellow ochre too and you can see I'm using a fair amount of water here. 
So what I'm doing is I'm mixing up that warm yellow and the yellow ochre and then see where they're joining in the middle. I'm creating kind of a combination. So this will give me three tones of that yellow colour. So when I'm painting I can just dip my brush into there and it's ready to go. Now I've just froze this in here. This is how watery you need your paint. It's a very light wash to start with. You can see lots of lots of water in relation to the pigment. That's the sort of consistency you're after to begin this bottom wash of colour on the hair's body. So what we'll do now is begin. Here I am just mixing up that colour. I'm going to start in the corner of the ear. So I've rinsed my brush off and then I've reloaded it with that warm ochre colour first. And what you, I'm doing is I am dropping that pigment into those water pools that I've made. And because that uh, water has slightly absorbed, you'll see that it will disperse nicely. It's a really thick brush loaded heavily with that very watery pigment wash and I'm just dropping in the colours where I see them. When you're looking at your reference photo you'll see that there's some pinks in the ears and burnt siennas. That's what I'm doing there. I'm just putting down some burnt sienna and I'm just popping it down on the corner, the bottom corner of the ear. And in, in a minute you'll see as well that I'm going to add some pinks to that wash just to give the effect of that translucent ear. So here we go. There I'm just knocking out the edges so what I'm doing is just with a clear brush with loaded with clean water I'm just pulling out and softening up edges where I see them forming and this will make sense when you're doing your painting because we did quite a heavy water wash initially when you're putting your pigment down you'll actually see that it will start to pool to one side and you'll get those very heavy edged watermark lines so to avoid them what you want to do is when you're painting it's just every so often, it's just rinse your brush off and then with some clear water just sweep along the side of where that watercolour and pigment is pooling and that will break the tension in the water and also then prevent a watermark forming. And by a watermark I mean that really sort of heavy splodgy line that often happens in watercolour when we do lots of wa washes. Here, that's where I'm just pulling down that pink. You can see this happening on the video. And I'm just adding little bits more of pools of water, ready for the pigment to be dropped into. Just there, I'm dropping in pure rose madder. And can you see it's just pooling around the edge of the ear? I'm doing it more intensely where that yellow and pink are meeting. And because I've made that water wash, eventually the pigment will all disperse and it will create that lovely watercolour effect. So I'll leave the video go. Oh, just here actually, you can see I've painted some pure colour onto some dry paper and then I've just dispersed it along to keep that wateriness going. So that's rose madder. There's a burnt sienna just on the bottom corner of the ear and then the yellow ochre and the... Um, permanent yellow. Whatever yellows you're using is absolutely fine. So I'll let the video play and I'll drop in with some voice over on it bits that I think that you might need a little bit of direction with. But remember to keep looking at that reference photo. You're looking to place the pigment and the colours where you're seeing them in that reference painting. And if your paper is drying out, which it probably will be by now, you can just reapply a thin wash of water to keep that watercolour effect going. So guys, I'm coming down the side of the hair's body now and I'm just making that yellow mix slightly lighter, so diluting it more with some water. And that's because I want the intensity of the pigment to be near the head and ears of the hair and the body to be more of a background element. In a second as well, I'm just going to accent the side, left hand side of that hair with some pinks and some vermilion hues. Uh, this is just to give a little bit of an interesting uh, touch to the painting. 
and here's this frame. So that's a that's a Rurillian, and then you've got the rose madder next to it. So I've mixed that, those two colours really with really sort of a watery mix. So they're not very intense. And then I'm going to apply them to the side of that body just by dropping in the pigment. If you notice here, we're not doing brush marks as such, but we're using the water pools that we've made to create a dispersal of pigment in for, in to create form. And what we're doing is we're dropping in different tones to create shape. Just here, under the leg, it's a little bit darker. So to indicate the shape of the leg, I've dropped in a burnt sienna. And can you see I'm just allowing it to disperse. Any hard lines, I'm clearing my brush. And if I think that it's bled a little too far, what I do is rinse my brush and I dab it off. So it's so as I was saying there, I just rinse my brush off and then I dab it on some clean towel. So it's fairly dry and what that's doing is when I'm working with this technique, I can then suck up the pigment. So if there's an area that's spilling over a little bit too much, if you rinse your brush off, clear it and dab it with some dry water and then you can use it as a sort of suction tool and you just roll it across the top of the paper and it will suck up any of that hard edge and that would also because the brush is a little bit wet it will mean that it won't do it in a hard line and it will softly disperse a little bit late back so you're not creating a really intrusive line but you're working with that lovely soft flowing dispersal effect that you want to get with watercolour it's just a way of controlling the paint. If it does overspill, you can just suck up the pigment. So folks, you can see here, I've almost got in all of that first wash for the body. You can see how light I've gone. This is because we're going to stack up and build up detail later, but this is really the stage you need to get to um, on your first wash. Um, as you can see, it's really minimal, it's really floaty and flowing. And now what we're going to do is add in some more of those details. So here what I'm doing is working on the nose area. So I'm using a pure yellow colour and I've just made a pool of clear water on that nose shape. And I've dropped in the yellow, intense yellow colour on the tip of that nose. And then what I'm going to start to do is build up that form and tonal variation in the painting. So here with some burnt sienna and, with a, and it's mixed in with a little bit of that yellow, I'm just dropping in some darker tones and shades, following the trace line and following the marks that I've made. And what I'm trying to do is create a contrast between the white of the muzzle and then the darker cheek area to give the effect that the nose is protruding. So you can see that here, I'm just pulling out little bits of colours and I'm working along. But I'll keep on going and then I'll drop in with more stuff. I hope you're getting along alright. <laughs> So guys, finally the com the camera turned round. I don't know why it was upside down for the first bit of the video. <laughs> but here what I'm doing is you can see that I've built up the main structure of the hair's um, body now and I've just dropped in some colour for that nose and I've intensified around the ears. What I'm going to do while this is still damp, using a flat brush that's rinsed well in water and then I would get the taper back in so it's nice and pointed. Can you see I've just dabbed it so that's clean water. And what I'm going to do is just flick out little bits of details. So I'm using the pigment that's already on the paper. I'm not applying more pigment here. But I'm using a clear brush that's been rinsed and then dabbed so it's slightly dry. And I'm going to pull out little bits of the hair follicles and give the impression that it's a furry texture. This is a better way than applying and painting on fur because when you tend to do that, you get these really quite hard marks. Whereas this technique, it's a softer approach and because the paper is all is wet still it will just mean that any details you're applying are a little bit softened just to let you know this will only work if your paper is still a little bit damp um because what you're doing is moving pigments basically on the surface so here i'm just putting around the hair's eyes and its muzzle and then i'm working my way up around the ear so i'm essentially lifting up a little bit of pigment from that area can you see that there and then flicking up with the hairs. 
to create that sense that it's texture. And then I'm dabbing away any excess. So every so often I'm picking up that pigment, I'm flicking it up to create a hair texture and then I'm removing the excess that's building up on my brush by dabbing it. And the secret of this is not to go overkill. <laughs> Here we are, so rinse in my brush and just go around the ears and the nose area anywhere you think there needs a little bit of the detail of that hair and just pull out those little areas. And again, try not to go overkill, just keep it nice and simple using big marks and using the point of that flat brush to pull out those details. So here folks, I'm still doing that technique, I'm just creating texture in that hair's body by moving pigments from one area and slicing out and creating a hair, hair, <laughs> hair on a hair, the hair texture. Here I'm kind of on the side of that body and I'm just pulling out tiny little areas, flicking out the paint almost to create texture. And again, I'm not, have you noticed, I'm not going to my palette, I'm not painting here. I'm not adding more pigments, rather what I'm doing is using the flat of that brush to carve out and move pigments around to create a soft fur effect. And I'm rinsing my brush a lot and I'm dabbing it off so it's slightly dry so it will lift up pigments that are already on the paper. And I don't know if it's really picking it up but there's very subtle detail here. But it will look really effective um, and give that indication that it's a furry animal. So just going around the eye here and up into the ear area. So folks, now you can see I have built up that base wash for the hair's body. I've added some colours in. Um, what I'm doing is I am just going to soften up any edges that have dried quite hard with that hard watercolour mark. So to do that I've just got some clear water, some fresh water, and I've rinsed my brush and then dabbed it off so it's clean. And then I'm just rubbing away any edges that are hard um, or have set a little bit too hard. And now I'm going to work on this eye area. So I'm going in with a pure yellow and I'm going to paint around the coloured bit of the eye. And it is quite syrupy. Um, and I'm painting onto dry paper just so I've got control because I want this eyeball to be quite distinguished. So straight onto pure paper that's dry using that syrupy yellow mix. And it's, got an, it's not so dry that it's set in, but it's going to pool around later. And use your reference photo here. You want to copy where you're seeing those colours. And I'm going to, in a second, drop um, a mixture of the Burnt Sienna and the Vermilion Orangey colour. But you can use whatever you want. For this, I'm going with a slightly, it's slightly more watery than the pure yellow that I put down. And I'm going to drop in the colour into the corner. And what I'm doing here is I'm relying on the fact that the yellow is a little bit syrupy. So when I drop in the warmer red colour, it will disperse nicely through the eyeball. And this will create a nice pattern. So now, onto the nose area. And bear in mind, this first wash that we did is now dry. So I'm going to go in with some darker tones. And this is to create... Um, focus and to also create a sense that that nose is protruding forward but to create that control um wait for the paper to dry so you've got your first wash is dry and now you're going over and you're putting in detail and you can see the paint spray is actually almost fresh out of the tube consistency so it's really thick 
and the idea being is that I want the colour to be quite intense. I've already put down the wash of grey around the muzzle and the nose area, um, so now I'm adding up this detail. Here that was a bit of burnt sienna, so I'm going to mix that burnt sienna um, slightly in with the Payne's Grey. Oh no, I'm not. <laughs> I'm just going to straight in with the Payne's Grey, folks. So I'm building up that detail. And I'll leave that there and I'll let you watch. But basically, anywhere you're seeing that really dark colour, you can place it into that nose. And I'm also popped in a little bit of the rose matter, the pink colour, just on the end, just to give it an interesting and slightly different texture, just in choice points. And now pulling down to give the sense of the mouth. So basically what's important is that you're stacking in a darker colour onto an already slightly grey wash. You don't want to go in straight away with dark, uh, with an intense Payne's grey like this because it doesn't give much room for error. So you essentially want to make that sketch of the muzzle by going in softly with a Payne's grey wash first, letting it dry and then stacking in the detail with a dark intense colour after. So here folks what we're going to do is we've got the mouth in and we're letting the eye colour dry and that's because we're going to stack in the detail of the pupil after. So while that's all doing that and drying we can work on some of the actual texture of the hair's body. So using a Payne's grey that's mixed in with a little bit of the yellow ochre and into a fairly watery mix. I'm just creating a colour that I can then stroke down the page and create depth in the hair's body and on the whiskers. And the reason that I'm mixing up that Payne's grey with the yellow ochre is to really warm the grey so it's not so obtrusive. Um, and you can see here I'm outlining the hair's whiskers. When you're doing whiskers or anything like that it's important to start light. So go in with quite a watery mix but one that you can control in a point and just go around and do the entire whisker area in this very light warm paint grey yellow ochre mix and what we're going to do is as this is drying we're going to drop in some heavier paint grey into some of the whiskers and this will give the sense of form and three dimensions if you just went straight away and did it all in a heavy paint grey every single whisker your hair might look a little bit scary. <laughs> so start with by putting warm a warm grey, Payne's grey mixed in with yellow ochre. Then build in those whiskers areas really lightly and we'll stack in detail later. I'm also coming along here, you can see on the face I'm using that same warm grey mixture and I'm just building up detail in the face. I'm going along the side putting the whiskers. You can see me tap in the paper occasionally. So what I'm doing, when I'm putting the fur in like this, so I'm stacking in quite a heavy dark grey, or even just a grey colour over the top of the dry under wash, what can happen is that it um, can dry in quite a hard line. So I put my mark down and then I tap over the edge just to disperse it so it softens up the whole painting area. And now you can see I'm adding in the some dark areas to those whiskers. 
again it's almost slightly pretty much tube consistency and I'm doing it on just a few of them not all of them the secret is not to go in with really heavy whisker marks and I'm creating the darkest area of the whisker near the hair's face and then leaving the warm grey lighter colour to the extended areas of the whiskers this is to mimic how light would hit them in real life you want to almost create the effect that they're running into nothing basically So here folks you can see I've just going around those whiskers, putting in those darker details on only some of them and always nearer the face and now I'm working up to those eyelashes. Um, I have put down a lighter colour first so I know where I'm painting and then just in some of the areas I'm making it darker. So the expression of this hair is actually coming from those eyelashes. If you find it easier you can use a very fine line pen to do this. Um, we will actually go around the entire area later and um, pull out some details with some fire liner. So you can just jump in and do that straight away if you'd like. And what's he going on here is just picking up these little details. And now I'm going to work on that pupil. So what's important here is that that yellow and the red of the eye, eye iris, I think it is, um, is dry. You don't want to do this and add the Payne's grey black colour into the pupil of the eye when the yellow is wet because you, it will bleed. So you need that area to be dry before you start doing this detailing. And leave space for the, the reflection of that eye. So that's a pure Payne's grey. And I'm just going around the edges, putting in the darkness of the pupil, but bearing in mind and leaving the white of the eye, the white highlight there. And I'm actually going to stack in um, a very watery mix of burnt sienna into that highlight after to give it a real sense of realism. But leave it out for now. So, and then I'm going to go around the detailing of the eye and that dark undertone. What can happen is that you paint this and the um, the harshness of the black against the very soft watercolour lines and the wash that we did initially can be quite hard so if you rinse your brush like I'm doing here and dab it off so you're using a clean brush and you just go around the edges just to soften that Payne's grey line so here is a clean brush that I've rinsed off and it's dabbed and where I've put that Payne's grey I'm just softening it out so I'm just pulling down little bits of that area just softening the line to make it so it's not so stark but what's important is that your brush is rinsed and then it is dabbed dry to do this or dry-ish it gives you more control and you just want to start with the edge that you want to soften and just slowly shimmy along the edge so that the pigment slightly bleeds out around it and will soften up that line nicely
so you can see that detail right and really coming out in this eye eyeballs and all those whiskers I am just going to add a tiny little bit of burnt sienna to that highlight it's quite a watery mix and that's just to make that sense of the highlight running through that eyeball if we left that pre that highlight pure white it might look a little bit too stark so this will add a sense of realism but it's a very very thin mix um, it's very watery so we still want to create lightness in that area contrast against the dark of the people and then I'm stacking in with almost a pure burnt sienna just adding even more detail to that eyeball area so I'm working on dry paper here so the underpainting that we did those washes are all dry and that's to give us control if we we're painting onto wet paper now everything would run into one another so when you're doing the details of the eyes and the nose and stacking on these Payne's greys and the warmer colours, make sure that the painting underneath is dry. And I'm using almost tube consistency paint. So it's very intense pigment. It's given a brightness to it. And here folks, what I'm doing is, I've already put in some detail of the speckles around the hair's mouth. So I'm going in with a pure rose madder. It's quite syrupy and I'm just highlighting tiny bits of those freckly bits with that pink. And now I'm running in with some um, Payne's Grey just to add detail. You can see me tapping the paper there. That's because the painting underneath is dry and I don't want that... Um, pigment that I'm stacking on the top to dry with a hard edge so I'm just bursting the edge of the um, pigment by tapping it and that will mean it will disperse nicer and it won't be such a hard line when you finish painting and that here because we're coming towards the end of the painting I'm just picking out areas and adding in detail so I'm intensifying the pink of that hair's ear in the in the top right hand side and then I'm adding tiny flecks of detail adding a little bit of pink under the chin and I'm measuring different areas and I'm thinking what can my, what can I do to make it darker, does it need to be darker? Just into that chin area I kind of thought that maybe it needs to be slightly darker so it gives it the sense of the head is protruding away from the body. So that's what I'm doing here. At this stage what you want to do, you've got all your detail in, so you just want to make colour tone corrections and add little bits of details in um, while you can. So here folks, I'm actually going to use a fine liner pen. If you don't have one, don't worry. But I uh, just wanted to pull out some more details. And if you're not too steady with your brush or you find very fine lines to be difficult in watercolour, use a fine liner pen over the top of this drawing and it will really just pull out some areas. So all I do is just go around um, the tops of the ears and around some of the body and I just flick away and use some of those detail in with a fine liner pen. 
don't go overkill with this. You don't want to ruin your painting by just covering it in pen. But just a few choice areas is good. Um, and any areas that you really want to darken the tips of the nose and the mouth and things like that. And any of those whiskers, that's handy to do. So folks, we're almost there in terms of this painting. What I'm doing is I've added in those details, the eye details, and also gone over with pen, and I'm making a final adjustment to the tone, tonal areas. So I'm just darkening the body around the neck to give that sense that the, the head of the hair is just protruding slightly. So because we're working on a dry area, so if you recall the actual um, first wash will probably be drying out the amount of time we spend on the painting. So you want to make the entire area workable again. So with some clear water, just create a slight pool over the area you want to work in. Go wider than you want the pigment to go. Basically you want to create almost um, an excessive amount of area that the water could disperse to so that you can soften the edges out. And what I mean is that when you are stacking in colour like this over dry watercolour, there's a real danger of getting those hard watermark edges. So when you're adding in different layers like this, you just want to keep an eye of when they're drying. You want to make sure that the edges aren't all grouping together and creating that watermark. And if they are, you want to rinse your brush off and just with some and dry it and then just go along any hard edges that are forming and just wipe them away with your brush. And just keep doing that until the water has dried enough and they're not left with a heavy splodgy mess at the end. It can be a little bit tricky to get hold of this technique when you first start watercolour painting and it can be frustrating because you're getting these hard water marks. So to avoid that, create a workable area, go much bigger than you need, cover it with a thin water wash, clear water, let it sink in a little bit, that is making all that pigment and paper damp again and then add in that colour pigment. And as it's drying, keep an eye on the edges, a clean brush again that's been dried off and just go around the edges and soften them back out. And keep an eye on them as they're doing it and you have to repeat this maybe a few times until the edges are really softened out. And that's it folks, that is your hair watercolour painting. <laughs>